500 million. I've got it here. I thought I was saying to Susan O'Malley from Google, watching Neil Layden, that he bore an uncanny resemblance at certain times to Steve Jobs. <laughs> Without the money. The, the feasibility stage of the Gateway Ireland project, which began in January, will come to an end when we present our report to our advisory group in a couple of weeks' time. Pace, as they say, uh, Dara, I don't want to preempt any recommendations that we may make, and we are not presenting a business plan today. But I'd like to outline briefly for you some of the business elements of the Gateway Ireland project. Our value proposition, the business model, costs, funding, and potential revenue streams, our proposed corporate structure and governance, and of course, our timetable. Our value proposition is clear and it's unique. It's clear in that Ireland has a very competitive national advantage already referred to, a huge diaspora. Broadly aware of its identity, relatively easy to target and reach, and with a total population around 20 times greater than Ireland's. It's unique in that this is the very first time that an online content hub has been created in this way for a country. A national website for Ireland that will be built by the private sector, endorsed by the government, and in the public interest. Our business model is firmly based on ubiquity first, monetize later, the model for so many web startups, from Google to Twitter to Facebook to our own homegrown Weedle.com, which Neil mentioned, and of course HostelWorld.com. Yes, we will develop organically or, and virally, but in parallel, we'll also scale up rapidly, because thanks to our advisory group, our key stakeholders and backers, we will be a well-funded global startup with the finance to achieve ubiquity and traffic quickly. Traffic, of course, is the lifeblood of online monetization. And in that regard, as Neil showed you, we will be offering quality content and links to content that will be relevant, engaging, and constantly refresh, refreshed as we build global communities, diaspora-driven networks, and electronic embassies. And of course, we intend to provide real-time content that's accessible by any device, web, uh, mobile, iPad, etc. As regards costs, next month we'll be presenting our advisory group with a breakdown of startup and operating costs, as well as cash flow and revenue projections. As regards revenue, no surprise here. Revenue will be generated through sponsorship, advertising, e-commerce, lead generation, and ancillary strands, including franchising, licensing, merchandising, royalties, and direct sales. At this stage, in what is a rapidly changing environment, we will rule nothing in or nothing out. Let's be clear about this. There is no comparable model for what John McColgan has envisioned. We are in uncharted waters here. Maybe we don't have the charts, but we do have a compass, and we do have belief. And we do have a timetable. We will launch on St. Patrick's Day, 17th of March, 2011. In the development stage, from now until launch, we'll focus on four specific areas. Corporate structure and governance, fundraising, recruiting the development team, and content aggregation. First, the appropriate corporate structure will be put in place. Gateway Ireland will be established, as John mentioned earlier, as a not-for-profit foundation with clearly defined public benefit objectives, similar to a research or an educational foundation or to some arts organizations. The foundation will be financed by the private sector by Gateway's funders and stakeholders on an agreed basis through a combination of loans, philanthropy, patriotic philanthropy, and market-related contributions from key stakeholders and partners. As part of the funding process for this venture, 
we'd be looking to have sufficient funds available from commencement to cover the initial cash shortfalls for the period up to break-even point. The Foundation will commission and contract with an operating company or companies to run on a commercial basis the website's various activities, managing its costs, maximizing its revenues, and delivering a return on investment and a profit participation to the Foundation. These will then be allocated to the Foundation's public benefit objectives, whether that's education, tourism, business, the voluntary sector, so on. And the Foundation's board will continue to invest in other projects that benefit Ireland. In essence, it's an interesting and unique variation on the PPP model, not so much a private sector, public sector partnership, rather a private sector, public benefit partnership. Second, on completion of the feasibility report, we'll prepare an investment memorandum and engage with private investors and key commercial partners uh, as we uh, raise the start-up and operating finance required for the first years of operation up to break-even point. Third, we'll headhunt a top-class development team to run the business and to build the website. A CEO, a CTO, a project manager, web developers, service developers, and so on. Fourth, and simultaneously, we'll commence, as Neil said, content aggregation, recruiting editors, curators, and teams in Ireland and abroad to plan, develop, and mobilize the community around our website pillars and our language-specific electronic embassies. In that regard, for example, responsibility for representing Gateway Ireland in a particular country might be franchised out to an entrepreneur or a company within that country. We believe that the model proposed gives Gateway Ireland the scale and the organization of a global player while retaining the flexibility, the adaptability, the incentivization required within a lean startup culture. <laughs>